Coming up on the FTC Open Alliance Show. We're nearing the end of the FTC Open Alliance Show, but we brought back a great team, 23513 INT Robotics from New York. They just had a huge qualifier win last week. They set the state record in New York as well, too. So we'll be diving more into their experience of competing at an event, what they learned from it, especially from a competition standpoint. And they'll be talking more into their 2.0 robot. Some of the new designs they'll be doing, we'll be diving more into the CAD of that design and the upgrades. Why are they making those changes and what they expect to see out of those changes as well, too. So let's learn more about them coming up here on the FTC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to animark.com slash robits to learn more in order today. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. Let's welcome back into the Open Alliance Show, 23513, INT Robotics coming out of New York. They just had a huge qualifier win last month, so congrats everybody on that and a lot of great stuff to cover as well. If you don't mind, why don't you reintroduce yourselves and we're going to get right into that event recap and uh, what you're finalizing. Hello, my name is Rachel Kim, and I do electronics as well as design on Int. My name is Darius. I'm one of the captains and electrical and programming. My name is Andrew. I do CAD design and mechanical. Uh, my name is Esther. I also do CAD design and mechanical. Hello, my name is Ellen Kim. I do CAD design and electrical. So you just had a huge win uh, a month ago. Let's talk about, you know, from last video coming into here, catch us up on what your team's been doing. Okay, so a lot of improvement, a lot of changes have been made since the last video. Last video, we only had a drivetrain and everything else was pretty much um, off. Well, we still had none of the mechanisms were really, besides the arm system, were really finalized. Um, as you can see, the, one of the first things we changed uh, was actually the whole um, intake system. We went from our active claw design to now just a uh, solid like state uh, claw. Andrew can explain more on that, on why we changed it. And after that, we can talk about what we actually did to make the carbon fiber spool viable for competition. Yeah, so we had a lot of issues with the carbon fiber spool. Uh, one of them is just it wasn't having a smooth extraction. So every time we had to go out, it would become really clunky. It would get stuck. There was a lot of friction. So the first change we made is we made this uh, bearing hole larger. This way we can have the, the way that the carbon fiber conforms. We can have that be a little bit best fit for the, uh, the carbon fiber spool. Then what we did on the back of the robot was we have these in the back, these rollers, and we actually spring loaded them. So this way it adds like constant pressure. Uh, even if the arm is extended further out, there's still constant pressure being applied to the arm. And it was a great help to us because without this, we wouldn't really have uh, proper spooling when we were at uh, greater lengths or when we were at the most compact form. So that was really one of the biggest changes we made for the, the spooling system. Then back to the intake. So we had our original active intake that we changed for this more of a claw type intake it still has a pivot and swivel and everything for that but the reason we changed it mainly was due to weight uh the active intake worked well for intaking the pieces but it just had too much weight as we extended the arm to our max reach and it would just kind of start drooping down uh and that was just something that we couldn't really handle uh having on the robot so we switched it for something more lightweight more compact and this turned out great at competition yeah, so we can get the uh, the video of us actually like intaking and scoring up. Another thing is that from a programming standpoint, uh, especially taking auto into consideration, because uh, we were more leaning towards the specimens, especially uh, in terms of uh, autonomous. Uh, I wanted to have something that was like easily reproducible and reliable, and so we figured that having something that uh, isn't ambiguous. We don't know. We don't have to like time how much we're rolling out, rolling in. We just know is it open or is it closed. It was much better, and, and in fact, it ended up being better for uh, our autonomous, but. Yeah, uh, other than that, having these retractable bearings was really what allowed like um, reproducibility in our actions, which was the most important thing, because that's what all of our autonomous routines were contingent upon. And uh, other than that, one of the one other change that we made is that we used to have acrylic uh, blue acrylic hooks and instead for climbing, which we also have a video on. Uh, we changed it to aluminum because what we think what uh, reflecting on competition, our greatest advantage was that we didn't have to take 
like 10, 15 seconds to climb during endgame. Our climbs were literally between the two and five second ranges. And having aluminum hooks means that we could just, from whatever distance we were, we could just hook, slam onto the metal bar and just retract ourselves up without having to worry about like the integrity of the hooks or anything like that. And speaking of competition, uh, things that didn't work out, and you can talk about uh, these hooks a little bit. So we initially intended to be able to go for the highest level of ascent. And in our first video, we had hooks on the top of this uh, aluminum piece that were built into the, the drivetrain panel. Um, and that kind of backfired at competition where we had a match where we actually got stuck on the wall due to the hooks because uh, they were just at the right level that they would get caught on the wall perimeter. Um, so after that, we chopped them off and we didn't have that problem again. But um, since we weren't even utilizing the, the top level of scent because for our strategy and gameplay, uh, it wasn't something that we thought that was necessary for us to get the max amount of points. We focused more on scoring, as you can see, on, on the pole instead of going for the level three ascent. This way we got our max points. Um, but it was definitely a, a very spontaneous change that we had to make during competition. But uh, it greatly affected us. This way it reduced a, a big risk for us during competition. Yeah, and just going along with what you're showing right now, that's uh, right now our zero plus three autonomous. Um, and just in, in regards of that, um, we have three odometry pods. We originally wanted to use the odometry computer, but we decided to just, um, since this was our earliest qualifier, we wanted to stick with what we were used with, which is just the uh, three pod setup. So we went with that. We on, This was just like rough tuning, like two to three days worth of tuning. And we found that the, re the results were pretty reproducible, especially because of the fact that the clock can extend so large when we're actually picking stuff up from the human player station with micro adjustments that can be made before we enter the tape we were able to get like almost 100 percent accuracy and it wasn't like the only things that really failed on us which is why, why i want to um improve upon the carbon fiber system uh, with our new mark II robot is the fact that the carbon fiber over time it degrades that's like the biggest problem that we noticed because uh, right now, what we did to the carbon fiber spool is that we had to cut like a six inch section out of it because after like repeated using of like from weeks uh, starting from robot in three days, we noticed that it the motors would physically stall if it tried to extend past a certain rage point. And so we basically had to like cut it down to length. And we noticed right now when we try to reproduce the same movements that we had in competition, um, the quality has gotten worse and the motors have started to stall up again. So we eventually want to have a robot that can obviously last across multiple competitions, which is why we want to move away um, from the carbon fiber, like whole spool design and switch over to something more traditional with a slide setup, uh, which is why we can start talking about just the core of what Mark II is going to be about with our system. Well, before real quick, before no. we get into that, I do want to ask you guys. So, you know, coming from your first qualifier, Ben, we have one of your matches on screen, which uh, at least as of when you competed, this was the uh, New York State record as well, too, which is awesome. Uh, what are maybe some key things that you learned from competition at this first qualifier? They're like, you know, either match strategy wise or something else that you're going to implement into your next event. Um, so I think one thing that we uh, really started this time around was a formal scouting system. So we actually started collecting data on a lot of, on a lot of our matches, and that kind of helped us pick uh, fur quals. So I think that was just something that we're definitely going to try implementing and fixing a little bit next time. And maybe the most important part is just synergy between teams, because um, well, I do believe it's important for both teams, for uh, like a good well-rounded robot to be able to be good at specimens and um actually just samples into the bucket uh well the trend that i see most consistently is that there will be a team that you know primarily focuses on hanging on the specimens and a team that primarily focuses on doing the samples so just figuring out like where does your teammate fit in um we thought we think we had a really good alliance because uh we were being like very specimen dominant during the whole competition and we're able to be partnered up with someone who was like mainly bucket focused and our biggest advantage during strategy is that instead of uh going to this, uh submersible and dropping off to human player, waiting for him to clip it on, just doing that like a uh, one in one uh, motion is that what we did is that we grabbed like eight or nine specimens during like the first minute of teleoperated period. And then after that, by that time, we like the human player would already have like uh, six to eight of them hung up. And like during the last 45 seconds, 50 seconds, just back to back to back scoring it. So even though we'd start at like a point deficit within the last 30 seconds, plus like our like five second hang, we, we get like an 80, 90, 100 points gain just within like that last half a minute, minute. Well, let's talk about this uh, Mark II robot and what some future plans are for your team. Um, to start off with our drivetrain, we realized we wanted more structure on the uh, base. So we added um, U two U-channels, if we see here, down here, so that the torsion forces can be less affecting the main belly plate. 
Additionally, um, we also wanted to change the ratio, the gear ratio of our wheels to the motors that control the wheels, uh, the mechanism wheels. So we're making, we're planning to use custom 3D printed pulleys to change the ratio so that we have less torque but higher speed. So um, hopefully this will be able to help us um, during our matches. Um, third, we um, for the drivetrain, we try to incorporate all the motors uh, down as possible to lower the center of gravity. So this includes the ones that are used for all the elevators. And um, um, next is... Um, just to mention that um, we also start incorporating like using Onshape to, uh, for this Mark II robot. So we combine both Fusion and Onshape. And to add on, we kept the sprocket and chain for the pivoting part, but we said to change to a generic slide elevator, but we were choosing between a belt and a stringed elevator, but we said to uh, go for a string because it was easy to, easy to belt the indirect, indirectly belt the spool so that um, the motor can be on the drivetrain. However, the spool can be on the shaft of the pivoting part, if you see there. And so, and we also added a linkage, if you see there, it's a passive linkage where um, it supports um, the elevator in two places, when it intakes, as well as when it uh, scores. And we made sure the linkage does not uh, fold over in 90 degrees so that the linkage can only stay on the side where it intakes in. So now the uh, motor for the pivoting part will not be stalling, even when it um, the elevator uh, mat reaches max height. And if you see the pivot, the linkage does not go fold underneath because there's small hooks. If you zoom up to the part, there's small hooks that holds um, the, uh, the pivot part. As well as for the climber, we got inspired by 694's Excelsior's 2022 bot, where the climber hooks have surgical tubing on the back. So it um, has a tendency to stay in a certain place. But if you push down against it, for example, if the robot goes against the wall or hits against the climber rungs, it will stay in place and pop back. And um, as we'll continue on with the... Uh, also to mention about the uh, sprocket and chain, we incorporated um, FRC 3A <laughs> shafts in order to have more structure. And so we also use drape bearings. And hopefully this will be able to provide more structure and be better off for the whole um, pivot and chain system. Um, so moving on to the sides, what we originally had was a four slide mechanism. Um, and the reason we had to add another slide was just because of the linkage. We were uh, limited to how high we were able to go. Um, so then we had to add another stage to compensate. And that kind of changed our mounting mechanism, uh, which uh, Ellen will zoom into right now. And um, if you see, we have the servo motors placed on the inside of the plates. Um, in our original design, they're placed on the outside. Um, but those lead directly to um, a couple of compound gear trains. Uh, sorry, simple gear trains. And what you can see here is we have um, a gear ratio on both sides of about uh, 1.5. Um, and this just allows our whole arm to pivot uh, back and forth like this. <laughs> Uh, and then on top of that, we also have our claw. And on our claw, there are around three servo motors. Um, there's one servo motor to open and close the claw, uh, which is the one right here. There is another servo motor right here, which is connected to uh, something that, to our claw, which uh, rotates around a single axis right here. And then finally, we have uh, one other motor down here. Let's see, right here. And that basically allows our entire a claw to actually pivot. So we have uh, a couple of de degrees of freedom that we implemented for our Mark II design. So I want to ask you a little bit, uh, you know, in terms of when you do rebuilds uh, for your team, you know, initially when you build a role, you kind of come up with like objectives, like I want to do this and I want to accomplish this with that. How does that apply uh, from a strategic standpoint when you do rebuilds? Are you looking at like, hey, I want to do this many more cycles or I want to accomplish this, therefore we're designing this. How does some of that discussion and process work for your team? Yeah, so uh, in all my previous years, I've always done a rebuild whenever we go into a competition because after our first competition, like we had our qualifier one, we saw many problems that we wanted to address. So we saw things that we could improve upon from this robot that we can create another robot that can address all those issues. So one of them was cycling speed and just like intaking in general. So having a smoother uh, transition from intaking to dropping off to the intaking from the wall, that entire cycle time, we can cut that down by creating a faster, more efficient slide system compared to the carbon fiber arm. So we have different objectives we want to pursue when we go into a new competition that we can pretty much cut down all of our cycle times. Even if they're small amounts, it's still better than continuing with the same robot that we know we can't 
really change too much on. So we decided to start a, a new robot where we can take everything we've learned from competition, see how the actual game plays out. We might notice that something isn't as uh, useful as we thought it may be, or we might see something that we never even thought about before. So doing a whole redesign is something really good that we think uh, a lot of teams should do because it just helps you start like a fresh new slate after seeing the entire competition play out. And for your team, when is your next competition uh, or your next qualifier taking place? Where are you at? Or are you going to the States already? So our next qualifier is on January 26th. Okay. So you got a bit of time to still get that uh, rebuild done and stuff. So we really look forward to, uh, you know, how your robot, of course, does. Of course, after a great qualifier win, uh, high expectations, I'm sure, for the next one. All right. Well, 23513, thank you so much for uh, taking time to show us these updates. Congratulations once again on your big win, and good luck throughout the rest of the season. We wish you the best. All right. Thank, thank you. you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started.